Howdy folks, it's the Literate Texan. I'm back with a video about 12, no, not 12, 24 classics that I'm planning to read in 2024. I'm putting together my, my TBR for the year. I've noticed that a lot of people have reading plans for the year. And uh, I don't know, maybe my reading will improve if I do some planning too. And so, you know, I've got actual books to hold up and show you what I'm planning to read this year. These are 24 classics I plan to read in 2024. And the, what inspired this video, uh, there were some great videos recently, which I'll link to down below, from Gina Stanier and Britta Bowler, where they talked about the classic books that they're planning to read in 24. And uh, I don't know, 24 might be a really aggressive goal for me, but I don't really have a lot to do right now except read. I, uh, oh, that's why I've been gone a little bit and I haven't posted any new videos is because I've been going through chemo. So that kind of affects my energy level and all this stuff up here, which was shaky to begin with. But at any rate, you know, I think I can do it. That's just two a month. My aunt, who's one of the most wonderful readers that I know, um, always alternates between a contemporary book and a classic book. And, and she's done that for, well, hell, as long as I've known her and I've known her for 53 years. But I'm going to start with two recommendations that I got from a man named David Lippman. If you're in the travel industry, you might have heard of David Lippman. He was one of the two founders of a company called Hotels.com, where I had the privilege to work for 10 years. David's one of the smartest men I've ever met. When I asked him for some book recommendations, this is what he gave me. The first was a book called, where did it go? I had it here just a second ago. I'm just kidding. I know exactly where it is. All Quiet on the Western Front. Okay, so I never read this. He recommended this to me 20, 25 years ago. I believe it was just made into a movie recently. So uh, anyway, if David thinks it's good, it's probably really good. David told me one time that reading a book, this is number one on the list, by the way, All Quiet on the Western Front is number one on my list of the 12 classics that I'm reading. But David explained to me one time that reading a book was like building an extra room onto the house of your mind, which, you know, if that's the case, I've built 68 new rooms on the house of my mind this year. The other book that he recommended was called Babbitt by Sinclair Lewis. And I don't know that this gets read or talked about very much. I'm not entirely sure what it's about, but I know I want to read it. Um, I believe Sinclair Lewis, Sinclair Lewis. So I've got another book by Sinclair Lewis here that I'm gonna to try to read this year. This is the Signet Classics edition of It Can't Happen Here, which sounds really creepy uh, if you think about it. Of course, there's so much dystopian fiction now that, uh, you know, post-apocalyptic stuff, that It Can't Happen Here makes it sound like it's gonna be a uh, post-apocalyptic novel. I don't think that's the case though, but we'll find out when I read it. This was number three, by the way, It Can't Happen Here by Sinclair Lewis. David only recommended well, number one and two, All Quiet on the Western Front and Babbitt. This is number three. Um, and I may skip it if I don't like Babbitt, because if I hate Sinclair Lewis, I might just go right past it. All right. So, number four. One of the greatest titles I've ever heard of a book ever. And this is a Penguin Classics edition of The Man Who Was Thursday by G.K. Chesterton, which is relatively slim volume, but that's okay, because some of the books on my list of classics are definitely not slim. So, you know, this is kind of a dollar cost averaging thing here because, well, you'll see. So that was number five. Number six, Mark Twain, The Innocents Abroad. Okay, so I love Mark Twain. I don't know that he's, I'm going to enjoy anything he's written as well as I enjoyed The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, but I'm going to give this a shot and see what I think anyway. Okay, so that is number five. Number six is a book that I have actually read before. And I've read it multiple times. And I try to go back every now and then with these books that I didn't particularly like and give them another chance because they're classics for a reason. My eighth grade English teacher loves this book. It's Lord of the Flies by William Golding. And uh, it's about a bunch of boys on an island. Um, for some reason, that book never worked for me. But I'm going to give it yet another shot. I think this will be the third or fourth go round with it. Excuse me. Um, if I don't like it this time, this is probably the last shot it gets. So that was number one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't want to lose count. Number seven 
is the Nick Adams stories by Ernest Hemingway. I know I'm going to love this because I love Hemingway. Not everybody does, but I do. So number seven, the Nick Adams story by Ernest Hemingway. That'll be a breeze, and I'll get through it quick. Also, since I love Hemingway, I've got this beautiful old edition of For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway, which I've never read. Also, will probably be a fairly quick read. He's, he's easy to read, okay? So that's number seven and number eight. I also have some Jane Austen on deck. And, you know, I have some friends who are like, do you really call yourself a reader since you've never read any Jane Austen at all? And yes, I do. But I'm going to correct that this year. I've got Emma in the plastic, uh, not plastic, penguin, in the penguin classic edition. I don't know how I put those two together in my head. I don't know anything about it, but I'm going to read it. And I also have a really cool edition of Pride and Prejudice over here. So this Pride and Prejudice comes with a cookbook. So I don't know what that's all about, but I guess I'll find out. So there's some recipes in the back here, beautiful pictures and stuff. It's a really nice edition. I think my daughter's found this for me. But I think maybe they have some tea parties and cook some shortbread cookies or something. And there's recipes for those in the back of this. But anyway, so those are the two Jane Austen books that I'm going to read. And I think, I don't think Jane Austen wrote a lot of novels. I think there were only six. I'm not 100% sure. But, you know, if I love them as much as everyone says that I'm going to love them, I will probably also read The Friendly Jane Austen, which will give me even more insight into the author. I say even more as if I have some insight, but I really just don't know very much about Jane Austen. It's just been a blind spot in my reading so far. So anyway, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens, which somebody mentioned the other day in one of the group videos that I was watching, participating in, that Nicholas Nickleby was a really good read. I think it might have been Mark over there at Book Time with Elvis. But at any rate, I'm going to give that a shot too. What number was that? Was that number 11? I think it was. But I may have gotten the count wrong. But you know what? Who's keeping score anyway, right? So, also, I've got the Norton Critical Edition of Dracula at number 12. So there's absolutely no reason not to read this. If you're going to read classic novels, why not dig into something really cool? And Dracula is the greatest supervillain of all time, bar none. I don't know. Some people might say Satan. Um, also, Moby Dick, which I've started before um, and never finished. Uh, it's about a whale, I think. It's number 13 or 14. Okay, so, so far, I, I feel comfortable with all of these being classics. And I feel comfortable that I'm going to be able to read all of them. I picked 24 because that's two a month. I think that's a reasonable number of classics to read per month. And as you saw earlier, some of these were pretty slim volumes. So I believe, two, four, six. I don't know why I didn't number these before. Sorry about that, guys. Two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Number 14, Rebecca by Daphne Du Maurier, which I read as a high school student, but I've been meaning to go back and read it again. Wonderful Alfred Hitchcock movie. And uh, you know what? I'm going to stop calling out numbers because I forget the numbers as soon as I barely know what day of the week it is, but I'm, I'm doing all right, I promise. I, you know, and the funny thing is, even though I'm medicated and being treated for cancer and all the rest, I have no trouble comprehending what I'm reading. It's no problem at all. Sometimes I have a little trouble concentrating on what I'm reading, but, uh, you know, I go back and reread it till I, but, but yeah, I don't get lost or anything like that, so. Anyway, the next book on my list is The French Lieutenant's Woman, which I've been meaning to read for a long time by John Fowles. Uh, this one's a biggie. It's got about 500 pages in it. I don't really know what it's about, but I believe it's a work of postmodernist fiction. Not 100% sure about that either, but I'll probably have a lot to say about it when I read it in 2024. Uh, next on my list, you know, I don't know if I've mentioned it on this channel before, but I probably have. I love The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And I read it every year. But I have not read his other novels until recently. And I just finished Tender is the Night, which was Fitzgerald's first novel. And I didn't like it. My friend Tom, who is uh, a brilliant man and, and an insightful reader, plays guitar with me every Wednesday, suggested that my next F. Scott Fitzgerald novel should be The Beautiful and the Damned, which he said is actually a very, very funny book. So I like funny. Also, I'm going to read The Face in the Frost by John Belair. 
This is listed in Appendix N of the old Advanced Dungeons and Dragons rulebook as one of the works of fiction that inspired the setting and gameplay for Dungeons and Dragons. I've read it once before. I don't remember it that well, but I do remember I really liked it. I thought it was a really charming fantasy. Also, one of my other projects, which I haven't talked about yet, but I will talk about it is, I'm hoping to read through all the novels and short stories of John Steinbeck over the next couple of years. I've always really enjoyed John Steinbeck, and I have a stack of four John Steinbecks here in front of me. Also, mercifully short of Mice and Men. You know, most people have probably read that already. It doesn't take any time at all. It's really good, though. And then there's some John Steinbeck novels, early ones, that I don't really know much about, like To a God Unknown. That's a Penguin Classics edition. Sorry, I should probably hold it more like that, shouldn't I? Um, but I'm going to read that. I'm trying to read these, or I'm planning to read these in roughly chronological order. So obviously, if Mice and Men will come later, it just happened to be in a different spot in the stack. The Pastures of Heaven, I understand, is a short story collection, but the short stories are all connected. So I'm looking forward to digging into that. I love short stories. And Cup of Gold, A Life of Sir Henry Morgan Buccaneer, with occasional reference to history. And if I'm not mistaken, this might have been Steinbeck's first published novel, but it's a pirate novel. And you know what? Who doesn't like pirates, right? Sorry, I get a little bit of dry mouth these days. I hate to interrupt my drinking, but I'm going to interrupt my drinking. I've also got, okay, so it's a good thing that I've got all these slim editions of Steinbeck to, to pump my numbers up because I'm also planning to read The Brick, Les Miserables which I've started but not finished. It's by Victor Hugo. Uh, this is also a Penguin edition, although it doesn't really look like a Penguin edition. But God, I love the cover artwork on this. What a huge book, though. That's going to be a big, that's going to be a lot of fun to read. If it's as good as everybody says it is, and I'm confident, why would I disbelieve them, you know? Everybody always talked about how great Lonesome Dove was. And uh, I put it off, put it off, put it off, and finally read it in 2023, and sure enough, one of the best books I've ever read. The next two books were actually recommendations from Better Than Food. And uh, I don't know if you've ever watched Clifford Lee Sargent's channel, but if you haven't, you ought to check him out. He has some interesting reviews of books. But he suggested that I read these as sort of a double feature, The Stranger by Albert Camus, which is also really short, and The Movie Goer by Walker Percy. Uh, he said that those go well together. And so I'm going to give those a shot together. And uh, you can watch reviews of both of those individually over on uh, Clifford's channel, Better Than Food. Really cool guy. Worth checking out. I also have the Norton Critical Edition of Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, which was the inspiration for a little movie called Apocalypse Now. People my age probably remember it. I don't have a lot of 20-year-olds watching this channel anyway. Um, but... I've always meant to read it, hadn't got around to it, and now I have around to it, and I'm going to get to it. And finally, another big, big novel. So I think this is number 24. It might be number 25, because I could have miscounted the entire stack. But we stopped counting, didn't we? The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander, or Alexandre Dumas. Am I pronouncing that correctly? I'm just an old Texas boy. But I understand this is fantastic. Um... You know, one of the movies that I return to at least once a year is The Shawshank Redemption. And uh, there's a really great scene in there where the main character is recommending The Count of Monte Cristo to one of the other inmates at the prison. So that's part of my TBR for the year 2024. Um, 24 or 25 books. I'm hoping to get in about 100 books next year, maybe even a little more. 2023 has been a fantastic year of reading for me, but I didn't touch as many classics as I would have liked to. Um, but, you know, there's no time like tomorrow. Anyway, that's all I've got for you at this hour. I will be back with more videos soon, but my video production might slow down just a little bit for the next three months or so. Until I see you next time, uh, stay sexy, read something good.